Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, today we're down at a friend's place and we're just doing a bit of work on their cedar bar. We need to rebush all of the tines. This is a Leon's bar with Morris tines on it. And the tines uh, have a lot of bushes in them that wear quite badly. Uh, so we're going to, today I'll show you how we get the tines apart. Um, because it's a little bit of a process to go through. So we're going to take this tine apart. First thing we want to do is pull the hose off. I'll do that in a minute when I've got two hands. Um, and then we need to be able to release this spring pressure on the tine mechanism. So we're going to take this bolt out. We're going to take the plastic piece out and then we've got a special tool we made up to uh, to pull the, the, the spring up and get the, get the pressure off the parts down there we need to get out. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get the rattle gun onto here and get this bolt out. That's a bit tougher than they mostly are. Yes, I know this is a chrome socket, but these are an odd size um, and this socket fits um, and we haven't busted it yet. I've done these probably seven times now. So this is a big long bolt. There's a spacer in here. Next, we want to pull this plastic piece out. So we just want to get a spanner on there and turn it 90 degrees. Um, and that comes out. These wear quite badly too, but these are replaceable. Now, we've got a bolt, same as this. We've just put some spacers on it, nut bit of pipe, bit of plastic pipe to protect the uh, threads a bit on here. So next we want to put this in and do this up tight. This will pull the spring, this will compress the spring for us. Now if we come back down under here, there's a pin here that we can now get to because we've pulled the spring out. These normally just push out. Um, where's my hammer? But if we look in here, you can see there's part of this bushing in here, but it's worn, pushed right through. So we just give that a gentle tap and this pin comes out. Now these pins have to go back in the right way round. There's a square on one side. Um, and around on the other. The only thing holding these in is the spring. It's a pretty poor setup. Now if we look right in here, we can see that bush has collapsed right out on this one. Now the next thing we need to do is take this bolt out. Now there is a nut on the inside right in there that you've got to get a spanner onto. And then that's a lock nut in there too, so you've got to undo this all the way. I'm just going to put the camera down so I can get my hand, both hands in there. The next thing we want to do is just clean the end of this pin up with the wire brush because we need to drive it out that way. Um, and these pins almost always bite you the whole way. Usually these pins bite you the whole way. So the best thing to do, you put some CRC on and they don't move. Heat up this side and this side. Pretty hot, red hot. Um, and usually you can get them to move like that.
and that one came surprisingly easily. So I have spent well over an hour trying to get these pins out. We can just, oops, I need to get that slightly further out. Now we've got the pin out, we can just slide the tine out. Okay, now we've got that pin out, let's have a look at the bits that wear. There's two bushes in here. Um, these wear out really quickly. Um, like I said, 1,500, 1,800 acres around here and they're done. Um, this bush here wears. Now, if you don't replace these bushes in time, you very, very quickly start wearing into the casting here. You can buy all these bits new it's a thousand dollars a tine. I think there's 24 tines on this machine. So it's $24,000 if you want to replace everything on it. Um, that gets really expensive. So you're better off replacing your bushes. The first year we did this, um, it hadn't the previous owner obviously hadn't done much maintenance to it. We welded up and ground out a lot of these. It is cast, but you can MIG weld it. Um, and then grind it back to the right sort of shape. Uh, same on here, these can wear quite badly. Um, <clears throat> these generally don't wear, uh, but the pin, where'd that go? Pin ended up over here. These pins wear quite badly. This has got a bit of wear in here. Um, these little pins here, these wear, but they only wear on one side. Well, they wear one side in the middle and they wear the other side on the outers. So you can actually turn these around 90 degrees and get a second use out of them. Um, obviously, these little plastic bits that go on top, they're sacrificial. They wear out in no time at all. But make sure that you keep replacing these when they worn out. If you don't replace these, the top of your holder wears. Um, and then that gets quite a lot more work if you've got to change these. Now, this one has worn quite badly because it had a broken, broken spring on it. This is the spring out of it. Um, that was broken. That meant that it kicked the bolt sideways and put a lot of load on here. And even though the piece of plastic was fairly new and had been changed before seating, um, it put enough load on there with the broken spring to push that sideways and wear right into there. Now you can see a little grinder mark in here. This is one that we've welded up in the past because, um, because of how worn it was and there's a little weld mark down there as well. Uh, so you can sort of do uh, do a bit of work to replace uh, to to repair these and get them working again. Now the other bit that wears quite badly, this is the part that sits in the centre of your spring here, um, and they wear round here. Now they are different on both sides. This side has the square end of the pin in it. So the pin goes in that way around. They, and they don't sit at the same height because of the way they sit in the spring and on the, uh, the housing. Um, but you, you do have to just watch out that these aren't getting too worn as well. Once again, if you're on a budget, you can weld them up, grind them back to shape. Um, but that's a fair bit of time to do that. So they're most of the bits that you need to check on the top end of these flexi-coil tines. 
Um, also, these bolts break um, on some of them. Uh, so you need to keep an eye on your bolts. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can get these tines apart. This is the way that we have found works best for us. Anyway, I hope this has been useful to some of you. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.